All right, we're going to look at two types of business uh, decisions that management uh, can face. And that is, the first one, whether or not to accept an order at a special price. Now, sometimes companies have an opportunity to do additional business. Let's assume I'm in here in the UAE and I have my major customers here in the UAE and somebody from Canada comes and says, Look at, I want to buy your product, I'm going to sell it in Canada, and I want a special price. I just want this one-time deal, a special order. Okay, so should we take that order or not at that special price? Incremental revenue of the order, if we will take it, if the revenue exceeds the cost. So, let's do an example. To illustrate, assume Sunbelt Company produces 100,000 automatic blenders per month. 80% of their plant capacity. So they have excess capacity. Variable manufacturing costs are $8 per unit and fixed manufacturing costs are $400,000 or four. The blenders are normally sold for 20. Well, they have an offer from Mexico to purchase an additional 2,000 blenders at just $11. Whoa, wait a minute here. We usually charge 20. Except this order will not affect normal sales of the product and these additional units can be produced without adding more overhead or capacity. Should I take this order for $11 when I normally sell for $20? Hmm. Well, let's use incremental analysis. If management makes this decision based on total costs of $12, the order should be rejected because the $12 is more, the costs are more than the revenue that this guy's offering. He's only offering us 11. However, when you think about it, and you know how costs behave, this special order will not increase fixed costs. It will only increase variable costs. Therefore, the relevant data for this decision are the variable manufacturing costs per unit. So you see, I have one alternative, reject the order, or alternative two, accept the order. Well, the incremental analysis, if I reject the order, I get nothing. But if I accept the order, I'm going to sell 2,000 units at $11 each. So I'm going to get 22,000. So my revenue will go up 22,000. Now, costs, well, if I reject the order, I have no additional costs. But if I accept the order, I have to produce. But I only have the uh, variable costs, the fixed costs, I don't have to add more fixed. So it's only the variable cost, $8 times 2,000 units, which means the difference is 6,000. 16,000, I'm sorry, this overhead is not right. So therefore, there's going to be a difference of 6,000 if I accept this order. And in this case, we should accept that order. So that's the incremental analysis technique for deciding whether to accept the order. Now, keep in mind, we set up our two alternatives, reject or accept. Now we have another one, which is make or buy. In the make or buy decision, we have to decide between whether we make it or buy it. But there may be something here called an opportunity cost, uh, which we will look at. An opportunity cost is a benefit that could be obtained by following the alternative course of action. If I don't follow the alternative course of action, then this becomes an additional cost of the other alternative. Now, that's a little difficult, but we'll work our way through that. Don't worry. Okay, for example, to illustrate this analysis, assume that Bar and Company incurs the following annual cost of producing 25,000 ignition switches for motor scooters. Direct materials, 50,000. Direct labor, 75. Variable manufacturing overhead, 40. Fixed manufacturing overhead, 60. Total manufacturing costs, 225,000 to make these 25,000 units. Therefore, the unit cost is $9. Okay? Alternatively, another company comes along and says, hey, you're making them cost you $9. We'll sell them to you for $8 per unit. What should we do? Well, my decision is whether I stay the way I am now and continue to produce, or do I shut down production and buy from this guy? So, incremental analysis. At first glance, it appears that management should buy for $8 instead of making them for 9 However, when you look at operations, if the switches are purchased, variable costs will disappear, but only 10000 of its fixed costs will be eliminated. Thus, 50000 will still remain. 
So on this basis, so the make, well, the make is not going to change. The buy, if I buy, then I won't have to make, so I don't have material costs. So that is 50,000 savings. Net income will increase by that. Direct labor, uh, variable overhead. But look at here, the fixed overhead, if I make, it's going to be 60,000. But if I buy, I can't get rid of that overhead. That's capacity. That's the, we're going to have an empty part of the building. It's still going to be there. So it's going to be a cost of the buy decision. And so therefore, the annual cost to produce is 225, but the cost to buy is 250, and the difference is 25,000. So it should. This analysis shows that Barron Company will incur an additional 25,000 if we buy this from the outside company. Now, if we had the opportunity to rent out that part then that becomes an additional revenue. So assume that through buying the switches, Barron can use the release productive capacity to generate additional income of 28,000. This lost income is an additional cost of continuing to make the switches. This is called an opportunity cost, and it's added to the make call for comparison. So you see, if I continue to make, I pay, I have to incur direct material, direct labor, variable and fixed overhead, 225,000. If I buy, it's going to be 250. But if I buy, I release the, uh, the capacity and I can use that space to earn another 28,000. So that becomes a cost to the make decision because it's an opportunity that I lose if I continue to make. So it becomes a cost of that decision. So now the total cost is 253 for the make and 250 for the buy. So you can see the opportunity cost makes a big difference in this situation. All right, so that's the make or buy and special order.